Yo, Adam Saxton here with Guy in a Cube, and today we're gonna look at Azure Active Directory business to business with Power BI. It's coming up. All right, you may be asking, what the heck is Azure Active Directory business to business and why do I care? It's a great question. First off, let's take a look at how this all worked before Azure AD B2B. Before you really had two options to allow external users access to your content inside of your tenant. The first being that you actually duplicated that user's account inside of your tenant. So this means they effectively have two different accounts, one in their tenant, one in your tenant, and hopefully the passwords match, but that would allow them access into your organization and your content. The second way would be to actually create an embedded operation and you could use custom authentication as part of that. So both were kind of complicated and could potentially be com confusing. And so they had limitations. Enter Azure AD B2B. In this scenario, you can actually allow guest users into your organization that are from an external organization without duplicating their account. The way this is done is you actually invite that user into your organization. There are two different ways that you can invite external users into your organization. The first is that admins can actually do this directly inside of the Azure portal. The admin will go in and create a new guest user inside of their tenant. And when they do that, they'll get prompted to create a custom message that will be sent to that user to accept and allow access into that organization. The second way can be what's more of an ad hoc approach. So if I'm actually publishing an app inside of Power BI, when I go into that app, there's an access tab. In that access tab, I can add email addresses for users or security groups. If I add an email address to an external user where they don't belong to the organization that I'm in, an invitation will automatically be sent out to them asking them to accept. So an example of this would be in my Guy in a Cube tenant, I'm going to invite my Microsoft user access into my Guy in a Cube tenant. So I would add in my Microsoft email address into the app access. And when I save that, an invitation will be sent out to the microsoft.com address where they will accept and get access into Guy in a Cube and be able to see that content. And if you're looking to add a group of external users as guest users inside of your tenant, this can be done with PowerShell. We will have links down below for the white paper which talks about how to do this or has links out to those scripts. So be sure to check out the description down below for that. Okay, I'm the guest user and I've accepted the invitation and now I've got an email which gives me a link to the published app that I now have access to. The URL for that app, you need to save it. Make sure you bookmark it or put it somewhere where you can reference it later because you're not gonna have direct access to it with inside of powerbi.com. It's not gonna show up yet. So be sure that you save that link if you wanna to return to that published app later on. You should have access to the app now where you can view the dashboards and reports that are a part of that app unless Let's talk about licensing a little bit because licensing comes into play here in terms of whether you can actually access that content. There are a couple different things to be aware of from a licensing perspective. A couple different ways you can actually get access, the external user can access this content. First off is with premium capacity. This means that the content is backed by premium capacity on the origination side. So the external users coming in don't need any licenses. Going back to my earlier example, if Gyna Cube is where the app exists, the workspace that the app is based on is backed by premium capacity. And when that happens and, I sh and an external user comes into play from Microsoft.com, they'll be able to hit that with no problem. They don't need a license. If they have one, cool. If not, not a big deal. Premium covers them. One thing to be aware of this, the embedding SKUs, so either the EM SKUs or the Azure A SKUs, do not cover this scenario. It has to be a P SKU. All right, the second option is you can assign a pro license from the guy in a cube side to that external user that you added to your Azure AD tenant. This means that when the external user accesses any content that is within inside of Guy in a Cube, they will access it as if they are a pro user. That pro license does not give them rights in their tenant. All right, and the last option is that within their tenant, so on the Microsoft side in this example, they would have a pro license on that end and they would be covered, even when accessing content in the other tenant on the Guy in a Cube side. So either it's backed by premium capacity, either I assign them a pro license out of my tenant or they come in already with a pro license. 
Row-level security should also work in this scenario as long as you're accounting for that external user's email address or user principal name. It needs to be accounted for if you're doing any type of dynamic security or whatnot, but you can assign them to roles because they are part of your directory. And for those that want to restrict access to Azure AD B2B, there are some things that you can do to limit what exposure content has outside of your organization. There are items you can handle inside of the Power BI admin portal. In the Power BI admin portal, you could do things like restrict external access for users. That's absolutely something you can block. You also have options on the Azure AD side in terms of the invitations. So like preventing those invitations from even being sent out. So those are all things you can do if you wanna lock things down and not take advantage of this feature. This is a high level look at Azure AD business to business with Power BI. There's gonna be more questions I know. So go ahead and leave those down in the comments below and I will answer them as best I can. And we will also have documentation out on it as well as a white paper that you can go check out. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for both the Power BI YouTube channel and the Guy in a Cube YouTube channel to stay up to date with the latest on Power BI. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.